While, uh, while Ali's signing autographs, I might, um, I might, I might, I might steal this. See you later, Ali. See you later, mate. Come on. Hope your knees aren't too sore. <laughs> Just a bit flat. Just a bit flat. I'm always working out being too like, oh, that knee looks really <laughs> in pain. <laughs> I'm just trying to distract myself. Man, I need some practice on this. <laughs> it's <laughs> almost made it. You guys are the guys the freaking gay? Yes! <laughs> so good. How's it feel? Finally get there. Oh man, lost some words, bro. We didn't even know what to say, eh? But it's unreal feeling, so. Glad the weekend's over, paid off all the hard work, so it's good, man. So. Bro, how do you keep your shoes so clean? Honestly. I literally only opened them like the other day. <laughs> yeah, I only wore them yesterday, but then I actually got like some dirty spots on it from I was on the back of Rob's uh, scooter that he hired, and it was raining the last night. And then I get back in the car, I'm like no, <laughs> but that's why you can never wear white. Have you got any idea what's going on? Or? I was like feeling bad that she like, you know, we weren't having a birthday party or whatever and I'm like seriously, she's like in her element, so. But yeah, she has no idea what I do, she just thinks I exercise. But Dad does it too in her eyes, right? so we're just the same. <laughs> it was like, I kind of played out how I expected. Um, that, like, like, um, like Maddie said, um, it was good practice for me because like honestly I spend 99% of my time in my garage. And I go hard, but like there's so many distractions and so many comforts. So to come out here with like, you know, especially Tia, I've come out and I got a chance with the best, right? So um, it's good practice for me to be like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that as best I can. But um, yeah, so it was good. Yeah, he's, he's like the biggest rocker ever. Oh, legend. He couldn't come to the pro, but yet you got COVID. Day three, probably the workout I was looking forward to filming and watching the most, and that was Strongman Diane. And the thing that stands out most for me about this workout is little Maddie Sturt going unbroken on the yoke when a lot of much more muscular or much uh, larger framed ladies were struggling with that yoke and she just absolutely destroyed it. So, so impressive. Um, that To me, that's the thing that stands out most of all other than Tia poking out a tongue at me. Uh, another great moment. You know, without within these weekends, they are like, Normally there's like two, maybe three uh, moments that are just really, really special, that stand out, that kind of go viral when it comes to content. Um, and this was definitely one of them. I was following, tracking her along, uh, doing the yoke carry. And I actually, I had the camera zoomed in on her face. And so I was like, you know what? I need to go a bit wider here because as she crosses the finish line, there's going to be flames go off and the uh, crowd will erupt. And so I go to change my, my lens to be wider. And as I change it, she turns her head mid you know mid carry smiles at me and pokes a tongue out at me and in the moment i'm like oh no i've stuffed up the shot because of my hands in the way and i'm turning the lens but when i got back to uh to the computer and i edited it it actually worked out really nicely and um it was a pretty special moment tia just casually 
looking at the camera, poking out a tongue, um, not looking like she's working hard at all. So um, and I heard um, Andrew Hiller make this point on the Sevan podcast. He said that she's basically ruined the CrossFit Games and she's ruined the Torian this weekend in the sense that it's no fun. Like there's no, <laughs> there's no competition, you know, there's no race on the ladies' side. Um, she's just continuing to push further and further ahead of the field, you know, like it's just becoming... Yeah, like every year we're like, oh, maybe someone will give her a go, you know, like the reality is she's going to win six in a row at the games and it's not going to be close. We all know that, right? If you don't know that, now you know. Uh, that was a strongman event. Definitely the two highlights. And then the very last event was uh, like a deadlift. It was a row, 1K row, 100 double unders, and then 10 heavy deadlifts. I think the thing I remember, the thing I noticed on this workout was Kara getting off the double unders a second or so ahead of Tia. They both kind of got off the double unders at the same time. And uh, the difference between the two ladies was Kara went and picked up her chalk and started talking her hands. Tia just went straight to the bar and started deadlifting um, and uh, edged her out with the 10 deadlifts. I also noticed that Ricky, I looked at the video earlier today, he was going hand over, like double overhand um, deadlifts at 180 kgs, which you know, for me, I'm like, I always go mixed deadlift. So let me know down in the comments, are you a double overhand deadlifter? Or are you a mixed grip deadlifter? I just, I feel like I lose half my strength when I go double overhand. I've got to do the old mixed grip. Um, but yeah, I just noticed that Ricky went double overhand. So yeah. Um, what else was there on that workout? Uh, one highlight for me was the race between Baden Brown and Jake Douglas. Sprint yes. to the end. Yes, that was amazing. Um, Jake only getting it by uh, sliding yeah. feet first. I don't think, um, yeah, I don't think Baden noticed him until the very end. Like he was running along and only just noticed him too late. Um, and Jake was already, is Jake? Jack, man, that guy's he's a rig. Yeah, he's a rig. And then he uh, he's probably the, the most jacked dude in the field. Um, tatted it up and just you know, looks like a staunch dude. And then uh, he grabs his little girl over the fence and just starts bawling his eyes out. And it was pretty special to see as well. Just a big strong man, just couldn't contain his emotions, winning that last event and uh, seeing his little girl, so that was pretty special. Um, actually, one thing about the Torian is there's so many parents, I feel like. You've got Baden Brown, you've got Royce Dunn, you've got Kara Saunders. I'm sure there's many more, but you've got a bunch of parents competing with kids and it's just, um, it's a pretty cool thing to see when, uh, you know, these people that have been in the sport for so long do it in front of their kids. It's um, it's cool. And actually, we've got to mention Scotty. Um, Zakara and Matt Saunders' little girl, Scotty, had a third birthday on Saturday. Was it Saturday night? Uh, Sunday. Sunday. The whole crowd, so the touring was sold out. It was sold out and that stadium sits five and a half thousand people. So little Scotty had five and a half thousand people at the top of their lungs sing happy birthday to her. This little little girl just standing there soaking it up. And uh, at the very end of it, she goes, thank you to the whole crowd. And it was, um, it was pretty cool. So um, that was another highlight. I think the Torian Pro, I mean, I might be biased, but I watched a bit of the Syndicate Crown and I watched a little bit of the Lowlands. And I'm sure they're great events to be at, but I just think no one does it like the Torian does it, you know, like, this is so, yeah. There's just so many people there. It's just, it was such a festival atmosphere, and the crowd's rowdy. People are you know having a few drinks, and um, we've got the fireworks and the uh, you know the confetti and all this the extra stuff. Honestly, Jono and Mike, they obsess about every little detail about this competition, from the programming to the layout to the vendor village. Just everything is so well thought out, and I think it shows and uh, the way that we can win. So. Man, I'm excited to see where Torian goes, and I hope that all the other events looks at Torian and, you know, steps up to that level. Uh, I'm excited to see all the other ones and see how they go, but it's going to be hard to beat Torian. I might be biased, but that's just, uh, I think most people agree with that. In fact, I saw this meme, it's a bit, it's a bit funny. Uh, <laughs> I saw this meme. <laughs> oh, man, I'll just put it up. I won't talk about it. <laughs> Who are your two athletes to watch over the next two or three years? Well, I think the exciting thing about our region is that we probably have a few athletes, especially on the ladies' side, that might be finishing up, I would imagine. I wouldn't be surprised if Tia calls her quits after this year, if she wins six. Um, I also wouldn't be surprised if Kara Saunders calls her quits. Um, I don't know if that's the case, but that would mean that, you know, the top two that are, you know, they are just with, they are non-negotiables. They're always going to be the top two ladies as long as they compete. But that opens up two spots. And so... Um, you know, considering, uh, you know, assuming that Maddie Sturt keeps competing and Jamie Simmons can keep competing, they'll be filling those spots, I think. Um, so you'll have um, Ali, Jamie, and um, and Maddie. 
I really hope that next year we get five spots. Um, but then the next in line, I would say Bailey um, Rogers is one that, you know, I've mentioned Bailey on the podcast before. She's a friend of mine and uh, someone who just keeps improving year after year. And I think she could make it if she if she keeps competing, if she keeps push, pushing forwards. And then the girl that you mentioned before, uh, Georgia, Pri- Georgia, Georgia Pryor, Georgia Pryor um, she'd be one to watch as well on the ladies' side for sure. Um, on the men's side, definitely Bailey Martin, the Kiwi boy Bailey Martin. He's an absolute beast. The only thing that stopped him in his tracks this week was uh, the strict handstand push-ups on the uh, strongman Diane. So he's definitely one to watch. Um, and then, yeah, I think Ricky and Jay, I mean, Jay's going to be there for quite some time. I'm not sure how long Bane will keep going. Um, and Roycey, obviously, they are dads. Um, I mean, they're still, they're still young enough, I think, to uh, to keep going. Um, but I think Jay Jay's the future of Australian men's crossfitters. Like, um, again, I've mentioned this before, but I think he's our, our greatest podium hope on the men's side. Um, he's so capable, so fit, so strong, and uh, so, he's so young still, so... Um, but yeah, Bailey Martin is he definitely impressed me this week. Um, I don't know if there's any other men that stood out to me as much as he did. Coming back to Maddie Sturt, five seven, five seven, four three, like those placings, and to miss out on a spot at the games. Yeah, how do you not go to the games? Eh? like to put this to perspective, Haley Adams had a twenty third place finish, I believe, at the Syndicate Crown and workout number one, the Clean Complex. I want to say twenty third. She then went on to actually win the Syndicate Crown at the end of the weekend. If you came 23rd at a workout at Torian, there is no way, there is zero way that you are placing on the podium uh, if you have a if you have a placing outside the top 10. And Maddie's a um, Maddie didn't Maddie's worst finish was seventh, and she missed out on the podium. You know, so I think it just speaks to the depth. And it's, well, I'm beating a dead horse here. I think we're all on the same page. Australia needs you know Australasia, Oceania. We need five spots, and I hope that someone's listening that can make a change. <laughs> Coming into this weekend, one of the questions in my head, and I'm sure many others' uh, minds, was how will Ricky Garrard be received by the community and by the other athletes? And I can say without a doubt that he was welcomed back by the community and the athletes this weekend. Um, it was a great, it was great to see the other athletes interact with him, show him love, show him respect. Um, and in fact, you know, after the last workout, even though Royce knew that he'd missed out on the game spot and that Ricky had qualified, um, I can imagine it would be a situation where perhaps you want to just kind of walk off the court and not you know, not talk to anyone. But Roycey, the quality human that he is, he uh, went up to Ricky and said, welcome back, mate. And I thought that was so cool. Come what it, same as the game of consistency. Woo. Oh man, biggest relief ever. Man, can't believe it's, it's over. I felt, I felt good out there. Let's get going, do another day. <laughs> Love it. Uh, how did um, how did the other boys receive you this weekend? Yeah, it's good, man. Uh, plenty of respect. I think I earned some respect back from the boys and. Obviously, it's always intense in the warm-up area and that, but after the events and that, it's always friendly. Good job, bro, for killed it. So, it's, uh, yeah, it's friendly rivalry. We push, we push each other to the limits. It's awesome, awesome sport that we've got. I love it. Hey, not doing no fucking shoe, fuck off. <laughs> 
for someone like Roycey to do that, to go and uh, just acknowledge him and, and give him that, that kind word. So, um, yeah, I think, sure, there's still a few haters out there, um, but I think the overwhelming response towards Ricky this, this year um, at the Torian was of love and acceptance, and it was really cool to see. I think the crowd really got behind him. He won them over. He's such a character, man. He really is. Um, he's a funny dude. Uh, I think he's really coming out of his shell and getting comfortable with the crowds and the cameras again. Um, you know, he had that episode after work at number one where you know, I thought, man, this might be the end of Ricky on this on this floor today. He came back, won this next workout, the rope climb one, and then he basically reenacted as a joke, reenacted him like fainting and falling over at the finish line after the workout. I caught it on camera, so I'll show you it here. Oh, the pink. Oh, man. Oh, oh yes. Oh. Yes. Raw love. Oh, this was special, man. This was really, really special. So, if you're not aware, on Saturday, you may have seen on all the content and on the live feed, everyone wears pink at the pro. They call it painting the pro pink on Saturday. And it's in support of, um, it's, as a, it's in support of a foundation called Small Steps for Hannah, which is um, against domestic violence in Australia. Trying to bring awareness, trying to bring solutions, and trying to sort this thing out that's... Uh, plaguing our country and so um on saturday everyone supports the cause wears pink <clears throat> brings awareness and and raise some money so um <clears throat> excuse me and so this year uh, i decided to do some pink shirts pink raw love shirts so a bunch of the community um bought those purchased those and all the money went to the foundation and uh, i handed a few of those to the athletes and uh yeah when i saw ali turner come out on court for the cleaninger complex with her raw love shirt on it just um yeah it blew my mind it was awesome to see uh, to see an athlete wear that and then james newbury wore it and so did jay crouch um didn't last long they both took the shirts off after running out on the court but at least they ran out <laughs> on court with them shot boys next time leave your shirts on all right um but yeah i'm excited man i think next year we can go bigger and better you know get half the crowd in raw love pink shirts i mean any pink shirt's great but i just think the raw love message is so appropriate and so in line with uh with the cause so um, yeah, that was special to see some, some content around that as well. Yeah, I had an absolute blast. This year was better than any previous year. And the main reason for that is I had a great team like Damesh who's uh, behind the camera. I'll turn the camera around soon and show him. Um, but uh, yeah, had Damesh, had Theo, had, um, I mean, alongside us, we had Ty and Benny um, who worked for other companies alongside us. But we all kind of stayed together and worked together as a team and it was, um, it was a lot of fun. So we're going to keep, hopefully keep building on that for the future and keep making the content greater and greater for the community. Um, and hopefully next time I can, maybe I can get someone to do the vlogging part for me because honestly this year I was just so pumped on what was happening on the floor and creating great content for uh, the companies that I worked for, for CrossFit, for Torian, um, that I just didn't even get to, to vlog a whole lot. But hopefully this little recap and the, the footage we cut in here hopefully gives you a bit of an idea of what happened behind the scenes. So guys, you stay sexy, keep brewing love, enjoy the next two weekends of semifinals. Let's hope that they are at the level of Torian. I doubt it, but let's hope they are. And uh, I'll see you real soon. Bye. All right, here's Damesh. Hey, guys. <laughs> it's not awkward. There he is. Hey. There he is. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Oh, ah, there he is. See you later.